Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Steve Robinson. I am one of the business development guys at Gallarath. I'm based in the UK uh, uh, with my colleague Keith Garland, who is the one that's going to walk you through what we're going to talk about today. We have been asked by one of our customers to give a bit of a, an introduction into all things to do with labor rates within SEER for hardware. Uh, what you can do with them, how you can change them, how you can save them so that they can be reused, how that they can reflect um, uh, different economic uh, conditions in terms of inflation, uh, different uh, countries uh, and, uh, and therefore currencies. So the purpose of the next 10, 15 minutes um, is to do just that uh, and to provide that information for you. Um, if there are any questions, uh, my details, Keith's details are on the screen in front of you. Please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we will be more than happy to help. Um, for, uh, for those of you in the US, please reach out to, to, to me um, and I will uh, make sure that the appropriate person in our uh, US-based organization um, gets in touch to answer those questions. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, uh, Keith, I think it's over to you, sir. Okay, thank you, Steve. Hello, everybody. So, today, like Steve said, we will be looking at Sear for Hardware and looking at labor rates in particular. So, labor rates split themselves into labor rates for system level cost and these are the different categories within system level analysis systems engineering and integration integration assembly and test systems program management system test operations and system support equipment so these could be set at any of the roll-ups as you can see you can edit them you can change them and they're only applicable when the uh, Sigma sign is yellow and system level cost has actually been turned on for that given parameter. So if we quickly change that to a yes by pressing Y. It will then open these up and then obviously the labor rates will become effective because we're now rating the complexity of each of the systems engineering tasks and the capabilities and experience of the people involved in doing that task. So with that said, when we start a project, we normally go into uh, in selecting knowledge bases, and these knowledge bases are going to be setting the labor rates for you based upon the currency that you're working in, etc. So, under options, set project parameters, we have the ability here to have a look at the base share we're working in. Are we using the appropriate currency? Are we using the appropriate inflation table? for you. Now, depending upon the currency that you select, the labor rates will change, the base share changes, and so on. So quite quickly, just close that one, set a reference, click on OK, and you'll see now if I go in options, set project parameters, and I change the economic conditions to 18, click on OK, You'll see there's a variation in cost. This is a reflection of the labor rate changing and the inflation tables also taking into account. So with that in mind, we can obviously use the um, reference to revert to reference, clear to reference, I'll leave it where it's to, and just go back to our normal screen. So when it comes to changing the labor rates, we come under the labor rates and cost factors tab and we can individually click on one of these and change that to my company specific labor rate and for each of the individual classifications of work and so on. So we can do that one at a time and then obviously we can utilize that change. We can simply copy it and we can come to the next work element here and we can paste that in and it will capture that. If you have a huge WBS, something large, something big, um, you can use the change multiple work elements, which we'll cover in a minute. While we're here, I just wanted to show you that if all of the labor rates change are the same, then at the top level here and here, where it says engineering early rate, 
manufacturing hourly rate, you can quite simply double click there um, to use the database rate in this case, click on OK, and it comes in. Click on this one. Don't use the database rate, but use my own internal rates. So this is um, 100. Click on OK, and then that will change the entire range of the costs in a single hit. When it comes to system level costs, changing the rates here, you have to go in and you can change them all by double clicking this, unchecking the def default rate box, putting in my, my labor rate, and it will change individually. Now, having to go through this, you think, oh no, not another one, not another one. You can in fact hold the shift key down and copy the entire range, right click and copy, take this into a Excel workbook, we can right click, we can paste, we can come here and we can copy our range down. But the thing to remember here is that this needs to be a no. Uh, this is indicating yes, use the default rates, but we don't want to, so we make all of these a no, and then simply copy this to the clipboard, come back into Sear for hardware, and paste it in, and obviously you can save that very quickly all the way down through wherever you need that individual change and so on. So it's not a problem. I've only got a few work elements to change. It's um, not a big deal. The other thing you can do, so you can obviously do that here. You can obviously copy and paste these in to Excel um, and paste them in the same way. It's not a problem. So if this was a huge long WBS, maybe a, an aircraft, a ship, something with a lot of work elements, under parameters, we can change multiple parameters. And you can see when it's, you open it, it'll look like this. We have labor rates and cost factors. We can open them up and we can come into the engineering labor rate. And similarly, we can double click at the top line and put our 122 two in. We can come into the manufacturing labor rate. Cancel that, okay to that. I want to expand it and I'm gonna put these individually. So these are on 77, these guys are on 88, these are on 99, etc. So we can do that all the way down through. And when we're ready, we simply click on next. Uh, who, what do we want to change? I could change all of them as they are here, or I could change all of them except that one. So you can decide from your WBS structure which ones you want to change, which ones you don't. Once you're happy, click on um, finish, or if you want to record a note, we can do that, include the date and timestamp, click on finish, and here we go. All of the rates have changed, and here are our notes, which we can see here, how it was changed using multiple work elements, um, etc. There it is, click on okay. So that's another way of changing it quickly when you have a lot. And obviously, by capturing the notes, you may have a, an audit trail if necessary for doing that. So when we insert a work element, uh, we have the option to go um, work elements, insert a work element. Um, I'll pull a roll up, I'll call it a nose cone. Uh, wrong level, promote, and then in here I'm going to insert a work element. Uh, it's the nose cone itself, and it's a mechanical structural. It's an aerodynamic surface, and just as a reminder, you can check this box here, look at the different categories, and if we find aerodynamic surface, where is it gone? We'll find nose cone tucked away at the help. So we know we're on the right track. Uh, and then select our platform. We're not doing ONS. We're going to build this one to print. We're doing it to a military full standard. And now in this one, class are user defined parameters, um, knowledge bases, and you can create your own labor rates. So 
In a second, what I'll do is I'll show you how to change that. So we insert a uh, demote one level and okay. And we have brought it in and we have all of our labor rates as default. So what we need to do, if we quickly save this file, save as, stick it on the desktop, call this a demo and save. We go file, new, new estimate and cancel. So back at the screen, this is where we're gonna start from. So now I'm gonna show you how to create a class knowledge base with nothing more than a rate, labor rate. So under advanced, click on maintain knowledge base and this dialog box will appear. This has got all of the knowledge bases available. You can sort by them. You can look at just the application ones. You can look at all the platform ones. You can look at mechanical and so on. So what we're gonna do is we can start from a position of knowledge by selecting the knowledge base, editing it, renaming it, etc. But I'm gonna start from a blank piece of paper. So I'm gonna click on add. What do I want to add? I want to add a mechanical structural, and this is going to be uh, your penny 2020 EC, economic conditions. Click on OK. So you'll notice now that we don't have a, a Sigma, we don't have a project level roll up. This is the name, and this is also the name that will appear in the drop down list of work elements um, when you insert your knowledge bases. So we're not interested in weight and complexity and everything you'll notice because we started from a position of no knowledge is all nulls and zeros. Schedules and quantity, again, we're not interested. We'll set that up as we go, but this is where we want to go. So our company in 2020, uh, this is 2020, whoops. 2020 rates and our rate for today is 125 click on OK however we do like to pay our managers a little bit more so we're going to give them 135 click on OK and again in production we're going to put a small note in there and we're going to pay these everybody 85, click on OK. So again, managers like to be paid lots more. So again, we'll pay them 125. And basically that is it. We have captured the labor rates for our organization. We're happy with it. So we come back here and we're gonna file, save to file and it's automatically gonna assume you're gonna use a class knowledge base. We're gonna save it into the repository and we can also include the notes in the serif file, which we will do. You can save this as an application, a platform, ONS, acquisition, development standard. But if you remember back to training, the highest precedent within the model is a class knowledge base. You define it, you know best. And we're gonna call this uh, your company Twenty twenty, and we'll save it. We're, we're good to go. We've done. So now we'll go back. We'll go file uh, new, new estimate, and we're going to do our our famous nose cone again. So it's a nose cone done by myself, and then our platform is Airmand product, no ONS. Acquisition category, military full. And we haven't got the option to select the class knowledge base yet, but that's not a problem. So next is what are we gonna build? So we're gonna build 100 in year one, 100 in year two, phasing out 50 that year, and that's it. We can set our project parameters. And for our American colleagues, we'll work in US dollars. We're gonna work in 2020 EC, 
uh, will work in Imperial, which is what you like. Uh, everything else is set OK. Click on OK. Click on Finish. And we'll return to our four pane configuration. And we're ready to put in the work elements that we need to build our nose comb. So we'll, again, we'll insert our mechanical work element. It's the nose cone. It's a aerodynamic surface, but this time we can select our company 2020 rates. Click on OK. And we're ready to put our weight in. Click on OK. And we'll come to our labor rates and we'll see we have all of our labor rates set. So that's basically labor rates within Sear for hardware. Um, Setting class knowledge bases are really good. They are very powerful. They start to introduce consistency, repeatability. It's something you don't look at, you don't overlook, and it's always worthwhile. And the one thing I would say is while we're doing it, if I insert a second work element for electronics, our nose cone, or sorry, our labor rates for 2020 aren't there. So you would have to repeat the process for an electronics work element, a site, an add-in, whatever you want to do, because they are specific to, in our case, it was specific to mechanical. So you just got to do that one more time if you want it to be in electronics so that they apply. It may be different rates, maybe they're paid more, but you can do that also in mechanical. So I hope that's of interest to you and, and add some value. Uh, just pass you back to Steve and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Keith. Um, so hopefully, um, for those that asked for it and for those that didn't ask for it, but were interested in it anyway, uh, that's given you a, a good feel for sort of capabilities that are available specifically looking at um, labor rates and how they can be changed and how they can be utilized and how you can save them for repeatability and standardization. Um, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me or Keith or uh, any of the, the gallery represent, representatives that you may know. Um, uh, if there are any questions, please get in touch. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Keith, for yours. And uh, we'll see you all at, uh, at the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Steve.